before we study psychology it is important to know the history of psychology because psychology is a very new science as compared to the other branches of science like chemistry bio and physics so chemistry bio physics even in philosophy are very old branches but psychology is very new and it has a history so let's learn something about history of psychology before in this class today we'll be learning about eight schools of psychology and the very first one is first school of psychology is structuralism so what exactly it is structuralism is considered to be the first formal school of psychology which was given by edward titchener and wilhelm wundt so these major thinkers actually said that you know behavior can be studied by introspection so they were the pioneers who told about the introspection and said the behavior can be studied by it so what is introspection they trained the participants to introspect to have an insight to objectify and categorize their thinking and tell that what are they feeling so introspection is basically having an insight and seeing that you know what you are feeling what you are thinking um uh, why i am feeling in this way what are my thoughts like so having focusing your mind onto your consciousness onto your thoughts and feelings obviously structuralism having an introspection to study behavior is not one of the best methods to do that though it was very popular and a very successful one as well even today introspection is one of the most important uh, factors or most important aspects when we talk about psychology because we are the best people to know ourselves to know what is running in our mind and what are the thoughts and we also sometimes know the reasons that why our mind is functioning in a certain way so to know that introspection plays a very important role but again it is not as empirical evidence and it does not give any scientific proof a person can fake in it, it they can pretend they can lie what maybe i'm feeling in a certain way but i lie that you know i am not feeling in a certain way because of so and so thing so there can be lot of miscommunication and maybe whatever i'm feeling even if i'm understanding my feelings and thought processes maybe i'm not able to well express it that way or sometimes my insight is not as deep as i think i am having one so that is why introspection is not a very scientific method to judge the behavior but again it is it was one of the most popular ones during that times second school of thought is functionalism after structuralism came in functionalism this was given by william james so william james here stated that instead of focusing on the mental processes it is important to uh, focus on roles and functions of these processes so in this um unlike a structuralism in structuralism it was only about that this is what i am feeling it was more only about introspection but functionalism on the other hand told about that it is not just the basic components of what i am feeling it is also understanding the state that it is states that serve structuralism was only about understanding the basic components of thoughts functionalism on the other end was more into the purpose of these thoughts and behavior along with william james it was also edward thorndike that majorly worked on uh, functionalism and the main idea was about learning thinking feeling and remembering that is for our survival so they were the father of psychology in us that was the first written textbook the father of psychology functionalism was started was started in late 19th century and it focused on actions of the conscious mind and goals of behavior in 20th century the third school of psychology came is that is gestalt psychology which is very interesting guess gestalt psychology was given by max widemer uh, wolfgang koller and kurt kofka so they this was all about the perceptions are based on gestalts or patterns or configurations and the person sees a thing as a whole and not as parts for example in this figure that you can see here now this is not a circle or this is not a triangle so basically what exactly is triangle technically speaking it is an enclosed figure of three lines right but here you can see it is not an enclosed figure 
it is it has lot of breaks it has just the small lines that are just joined together it looks like triangle but if somebody asks you what figure it is you are going to say it is a triangle or it is a circle or a square whatever you can see here so why you are doing that because your brain does not see the parts and bits and parts of a figure you see the thing as a whole or for example i'll give you another example here there is a word now in this word it the technical spelling of the right spellings of apple is a p p l e but here i have written a p p e l now even if you have read the wrong spellings you still going to read it as apple and not a pale or something like that the reason is again that our mind does not read letter wise a p p l e we take the whole word as it is and we still read it apple so sometimes even during the misprinting in the books or so we read it correctly many a times because our a uh, brain is habitual of taking the thing as a whole this is what gestalt psychology is all about the next school of psychology is behaviorism which was given by pavlov skinner and watson according that is observable that is noticeable it like behavior only that can be studied and that is the true way of measuring psychology the school they said that it is the external environmental factors that affects our behavior instead of things that are inside us so it's not the internal thing but it's our environment and surroundings that affects the person's behavior and they gave the concept of conditioning classical conditioning and operant conditioning classical conditioning is a type of learning that involves associating a previously neutral stimulus with a stimulus that naturally and automatically triggers a response we'll be talking more about classical conditioning separately in another lesson for now operant conditioning this kind of learning involves using rewards punishments to create an association between the behavior and the consequences of that behavior so basically the behavioral school of psychology significantly influenced the course of psychology and there were many ideas and techniques that emerged from the school of uh, thought and they are still widely used uh, they talked about aversion therapy then comes in our favorite many people know about it the school of psychoanalysis given by sigmund freud sigmund freud is the father of psychoanalysis and he gave some beautiful concepts about concepts about consciousness subconscious and unconscious he also talked about dream analysis and about it ego super ego so what according to sigmund freud uh, the school of the school of thought is This school of thought by Sigmund Freud majorly focuses on that our conscious level like whatever you know the running thoughts are happening that is the conscious level of our mind that is just the tip of the iceberg that is just 1/10 of what we are aware about right now but there is 9/10 that is our subconscious and unconscious mind which is full of memories and feelings and thoughts which we are not actually very much aware about and our behavior is controlled majorly by the subconscious and unconscious mind rather than the conscious mind he also talked about it ego and super ego means that our behavior is influenced by our primary urges our desires whatever we need we desire we behave according to our desires only like a small baby if a small toddler or a baby wants to throw the rattle right on your face they would do that they will not think of what is right or what is wrong or what it is moral or what are ethics nothing like that they are just going to throw things on your face right away if they want to so they follow it and next is super ego super ego is when you are behaving uh, strictly on the moral values this is right this is wrong i have to be on the right path absolutely so this is the super ego and ego is the balance of id and super ego we are usually we all have ego we are kind of swinging between id and super ego in at some places we behave according to our desire in some places we behave according to our morals so this is was given by sigmund freud then next is the humanistic school of psychology which was given by abram maslow and carl rogers so what they tell about in the school is 
psychology is about fully functioning person means that we uh, trust our instincts and do what we desire we will it tells us about the capacity that individuals have to make choices they have to select courses of action and control over their own lives then our behavior is redirected by the hierarchy of our needs what is my need is my need the lowest level that is the uh, the basic level of food survival breed or it is the higher level of social and attention or the highest is it the self actualization so this is what hierarchy of needs which was given by maslow suggesting that people are behave in a way they are motivated by a series of increasingly complex needs starting from the basic physiological level to the highest self actualization level then is the peak experiences in self actualization so this was given by carl rogers and maslow abraham humanistic psychology is even very popular in today's time we call it as positive psychology where we talk about how to stay happy to fulfill our dreams how to fulfill our satisfaction our desires and to be happy and to stay positive all the time no matter what the situation is so positive psychology is a kind of a from comes from humanistic psychology school of thought and is pretty popular nowadays Next comes in cognitive school of psychology where they say it was given by Jean Piaget it talks about the development of a child over a period of time and they talk about cognitive how the mental processes works about your attention sensation perception thinking your uh, problem solving uh, your memory all these cognitive processes all these memory uh, processes that happen these are the cognitive school of psychology cognitive school of psychology emerged in 1950s and it's partly response to behaviorism so it talks about stages of cognitive development socio cultural theory by vygotsky and informational processing theory it also talks about cbt which is influenced uh, heavily by psychological perspective and last here is biological psychology where we talk about high how, how biology has a deep and you know uh, great impact on the psychology and vice versa so biology and psychology go hand in hand how our physical attributes the of the brain and the our hormones our pheromones our uh, chemicals that are producing in our body and so on has an impact on the psychology of a person or a psychology of a person can also has an impact on the physiology of a person so biology and psychology go hand in hand this school of thought actually talks about emphasizes the study of biological causes and the mental health conditions So these were some of the important schools of psychology history of psychology over a period of time how it evolved and what uh, are where are we today each school of psychology has definitely given us some take away and has been very useful in some way though each one of the schools have been criticized in some way but that's okay they all have their own take aways and something to learn from So keep watching my channel Sonia Psychology Classes don't forget to subscribe because my next lesson is coming on the biological approach and we'll be starting biological approach for IB psychology students so keep watching